thing here is we do our uh, principles coffee chat. If this is your first time joining us, just a little bit about the purpose of the coffee chat. It is a time for uh, parents and guardians, caregivers to submit some questions. And then I will address those and give you what information I have to share. And sometimes those questions actually prompt us to look into a topic a little further because we maybe don't have an answer or there's more to learn about that topic. Either way, the purpose of the conversation is to make sure that we get information that you are interested about out to you so you are better informed. For today, there were three specific responses submitted in advance. So we start with those submitted responses first. And please know that the chat is open if there are any questions that you would like to raise, either as a follow-up to questions we are currently addressing, or whether there is a topic on your mind that you would like to discuss today. And then I will move over to the chat once we get through the submitted questions and we'll start addressing those. So thank you very much for being here. In our first question that was submitted, this one reads, uh, why do kids have no place to be during the lunch period? And why is there only one lunch period? So let's talk a little bit about lunch. So the way the current Wooten Bell schedule functions is that our period five functions as our identified lunch period. And there is one extended lunch period and all students go to lunch at the same time. Sometimes schools have an alternate structure and sometimes schools will have rotating lunches in which a specific identified group, they will go to lunch for usually 30 minutes in this structure, and then they happen regularly throughout the day. Um, some schools, but I am not aware of any high school that does that. It is my kind of my understanding that all high schools take the structure in which everyone goes at the same time. And the reason that many schools went to this structure, or I guess I should say at least one reason that I am aware of in which high schools looked at this and many of them made the move was by running one lunch period, you can devote additional time that goes beyond what your standard lunch period of 30 minutes would be so that students can then also connect with staff members, hold club meetings, possibly reassess for a class if there's a quiz that you want to retake. It provides additional time during the day for students to do things that go beyond just eating your lunch. And so that is the benefit to the high school structure of the longer lunch. And by having the longer lunch one time during your day, you don't draw additional minutes or periods off of the academic classroom time. So that is the current structure that we have and one of the reasons why we have it. Now, as for why students not having a place during the lunch period, that one seems pretty specific to a, a student's circumstances, right? So we might not send all students to the cafeteria, but many students do go to the cafeteria. Students also might find a teacher and they go to the same classroom each time and they have their lunch there. Some students consistently eat outside and I kind of you know want to say that most students, my observation, pretty easily find their place in the school in which they go regularly to that location almost every day to have their lunch, whether it be the lobby to the auditorium. And that kind of just ends up being their space almost organically. So if there is a student that possibly there just isn't a place for them to go or it just doesn't seem to be working, you know, that I think we would kind of tackle, if I'm reading between the lines here correctly, we think we would tackle that almost case by case basis. And I would recommend possibly talking with a counselor about that. So that's a little information about lunch. And if there are any follow-ups to that response, by all means, the chat is open. So please place any comments or questions there. So another question that we had submitted in advance, and this one is about dress code. So let me go ahead and read this one, and then we'll take it kind of point by point. Is the dress code enforced at Wooten? So this individual writes that they have reviewed the dress code and annotated the dress codes and the annotated dress code says, quote, dress appropriate for school setting and business environment. This can be internalized as somewhat subjective. 
but it goes, it does go further in bullet one and specifies, it specifies lewd and revealing clothing that will not be permitted, right? And then this question goes into observation. The past two months, I've seen revealing clothing, and then it moves into, does this become a distraction to the overall community? So a couple of parts to the question. Um, I will say if the individual who is, who submitted this question is on the chat today, as I was formulating my response uh, in the chat or directly to me, if there is a way to let me know which specific policy you have found, reviewed, and then quoted in your response, uh, that would be helpful. So to contextualize this a little bit, um, I searched around on the Wooten website as well. I, of course, went to my kind of go-to place, which is bigger picture MCPS, what is established by way of a dress code. And that language can be found in the Students' Rights and Responsibilities document, which is searchable through the MCPS website. You know, that sets the larger standard of what we're looking at by way of dress code across the school system. And then schools themselves can take the policy further so long as you align to the MCPS bigger picture standard. Part of this question was to state about it being subjective, right? And when it comes to dress codes, it's been my experience, can't say whether this is right or wrong, but as schools have worked through this, I do believe that dress code policies do tend to be subjective. And I do believe that there is some methodology behind that. So I have been in schools where policies have been written with great specificity, that creates challenges. I have also been in places where policies are very general, and then that creates some issues. So I think the sweet spot personally for a dress code is if a dress code provides enough language in which staff can intervene when needed, then you have done your kind of due diligence or you've possibly met an appropriate standard by which a dress code policy needs to be in place at a school. And really for MCPS, my interpretation, but I, I really do believe that this is what the system is trying to do, is to not be so specific, but provide that standard by which we can intervene. And the threshold for the standard of intervention is, does the students dress for a number of reasons, create a distraction or disruption to the school in which we cannot normally function? And that can be in a number of ways. I'll cite a couple of examples. If a student were to come in and their clothing were to show weapons, let's say guns and bombs and a, a really violent thing on their, their clothing, that might create a disruption to the point in which we would need to intervene and speak with that student and, try, and possibly figure out, like, what is your plan B? might we have to change these clothes? It is a conversation. It oftentimes includes parents. And we're trying to determine kind of what led to the clothes being worn to school, right? That's our intervention point. That does not mean to say that every time a perceived distraction is there, that means we are intervening, right? It really is circumstantial. And it comes down to whether a staff member has determined that's too far. And then we would intervene specifically with the student. So part of this is the enforcement. One thing that I would want you to know is there generally is not broad across the board, like imagine painting the brush and just saying like at this point, let's go back in the, the day a little bit. When I started teaching and this was across many schools, there was a standard by which like shorts or skirts or whatever you were wearing should not be a specific or should not be too short or if you put your fingertips like that was the measure. It should not be above your fingertips. There was certainly some, some methodology behind that, but the days by which we put broad structures in place such as that are no longer in place and they're not here at Wooten. And so at this point in time, we have general guidelines and then we intervene as needed, right? So we don't kind of pay that broad brush stroke when it comes to that. That also may mean, right, that some students it may be an individual's perspective or perception that someone is not dressed appropriately for school 
And yet it might appear that we are not intervening, right? And that's true because it, it really does come down to someone making that determination, oftentimes an adult, but I'm not saying that students shouldn't speak to us, um, but really comes down to an adult making that call. And then oftentimes either a, someone in security is alerted, an administrator is alerted, a counselor is alerted, and then we determine the plan for intervening or speaking with that student. Um, if students have concerns, they should reach out to an adult, right? If that is something that is on their mind, or they really believe something goes too far. Um, I really don't ever think there's a point where we should not be encouraging students to reach out and talk with an adult. Does not necessarily mean where you're going to we are going to intervene per se. But you should say something if that's on your mind and an adult should speak with you and work with you about that. So I'm just gonna check this question and see if there's any part that I really did not get to in my response, if I can just have a moment. Okay, I think I got pretty close. To all of these and if not please know the chat is open if there's anything that you wanted me to extend further just let me know in the chat um this individual also submitted a question too so let's step into that next and that is is the culture of respect requirement new so i'll start with this information in case you're kind of hearing about this for the first time so culture of respect is not new however it might be new at wooten and the concept behind this module, and we'll begin with that. So the culture of respect module is an experience that students go through annually. It is an MCPS requirement that students participate in it. And the idea is that you watch modules that go through specific information that we want students to know about, right? And staff, for example, each summer into the start of pre-service, they have to complete compliance modules, which go over topics and information response protocols that we want all staff to know about and are in place all of the time. Cultural respect is not different from that. It is student-specific information that rolls out to students, and at least for the last two years, it has occurred for schools in November and December. So I do not know if and when Wooten did that. Last year, I wasn't here, but the school that I was at culture of respect module. It happened during advisory at my other school. Students kind of watch it. They get that information. They acknowledge that they have completed culture of respect module, and then they kind of move on. It's like one of those things that you, you wrap up the, the first time you do that. Um, so culture of respect, the plan for that is that students will have time at school here at Wooten on Monday to complete their culture of respect module while they are in an extended advisory period. And so if your, your child or student has not done that, they will have time on Monday, but students have the option here to complete it whenever they would like. So some students, I think we got the number 16 students did culture of respect when it was released over the weekend. And so that one's already done for them. That means that extended advisory time is time back to students. So what I would like for you all to know is like, yes, we want students to do it. It's a requirement. It's information we want them to know about. But students can complete culture of respect, whatever they would like. They will have devoted time. But if they get it done in advance, then you will have a longer extended advisory period of time coming back to you on Monday when we have that uh, scheduled here at Wooten. Okay, so question two. And then uh, there was a third question submitted um, from, I believe, last night's presentation. So at the PTSA meeting last night, I gave a presentation on emergency response protocols that are in place always at schools, including Wooten. And we went through a lot of those details and it seems like there was a follow-up question to some of the content that was presented last night. So thank you to that individual that submitted the follow-up question, which is about reverse evacuation and then doors being locked from portable classrooms. And I totally understand where this question is coming from. When you work the logistics, like this one very much adds up to me. So let's explain this one a little further. Let me start with reversed evacuation, which the idea is that sometimes there may be circumstances inside a school that are unsafe that require you to exit the school. We call that an evacuation. In reverse, 
there might be something outside. And sometimes we have classes outside like PE classes in which it's no longer safe for those classes to be outside and hence they need to come back into the school. That is reverse evacuation. And that may include portable classrooms. So if there was a hazmat spill, and let's say the wind is blowing, this is the example I lose last, used last night, all PE classes and all portable classrooms may be told, likely told, they need to come into the school and be inside the walls of the building because of the response that we need to take. And so then this question is, well, what happens for those portables because those doors in the back of the school are locked? And they are, and they, they need to be so that the building remains safe and controlled at all times. We would never move into the reverse evacuation response without the OSET, which is the on-site emergency team. And every building has one. We have one here at Wooten. If we ever go into an emergency response and it's it's more than a drill, we convene OSET. OSET then is available as part of the response. So if we were sending out the message and we knew we were going into reverse evacuation with portables coming in, a member of the OSET team or security would be would respond to that door to make sure that it was open for students to come in. The second part of this that I want you to know about is reverse evacuation does not happen outside the control of adults. And so the teachers in the portables, they have their key, their swipe card that controls the back door. So students are coming in under escort of an adult. And if you remember on this slide, there's also a note about attendance and await further instructions. And that's in place on all of our emergency responses. But what that signals to you all is that adults are leading the way. And so if you were Ms. Stepling, you are in that first portable on your right and you're bringing your class in, you're lining them up, you're telling them what's about to happen. They're brought in collectively as a class and she's opening the door or security is meeting them to make sure that door is open. So that is how it works. And then once OSET is activated during an emergency, they're in activation with heightened monitoring and heightened response, just like that throughout the entire emergency response. So I would also kind of extend this response a little further by saying it's very unlikely we would just have any students stuck out there because your OSET is constantly monitoring doors and cameras and monitoring kind of the emergency response. So we're in heightened response through the entire situation. So those are the three questions, well, number of questions, but those were the three submitted uh, responses. And so if there's any follow up to anything that I shared, please, by all means, put that in the chat if you want to ask a follow up or ask me a question directly. And if you want to come off you um, off your uh, mute, you can do that as well and ask a question directly. Well, while we're waiting for um, people to maybe think of some questions, I'm going to take this opportunity again, every opportunity I get to plug the holiday program. Um, so if anybody's on this call and you haven't had a chance to check out our program, I'm going to put a link in the chat. Um, check it out. We got another new family this morning, so we're up to 30 families and 73 kids. So we've got a lot of work to do, and um, we need the support of the entire Wooten community. So um, just take a minute, check that out, and um, please put your questions in the chat or, you know, like Mr. Nelson said, come off mute. Um, and uh, otherwise, we'll probably wrap up soon. Thank you, Nikki. Appreciate the plug. Uh, while we're plugging out, just also the one that uh, I shared last night, just a reminder, the fall play is this weekend. So if you want to come and see a wonderful production of Clue, there are lots of opportunities in the evening and matinees. There are matinees on Saturday and Sunday. If you want to come by and see that production, it should be really entertaining and we hope to have a great turnout and crowd.
right, last call for questions. Are there any out there? Oh, yes. Here's a good one, a direct one. I So someone just submitted a question about uh, when and where for graduation. It's about that time. Um, so I do not believe it should be much longer. I'm hopeful it will be, it will not be much longer. Um, but please know we do not have the information for graduation yet, right? But we have a sense about the window of time, right? So I will pass this along that if you're scheduling and you want to just tell your family like windows of time to hold, we definitely know after Memorial Day for, you know, the next two weeks is our window of time. So that at least gives families for planning purposes, a ballpark sense about when you kind of want to don't put anything like an extensive family vacation in place because it will certainly fall somewhere within that window. Um, our information is in, but we do not have confirmation yet about when and where graduation will take place. We'll get it out to you as soon as we can, um, but I'm hopeful it will be soon. And thank you for that question. I'll also just put out a reminder that we won't be having a coffee chat next month because that'll be right up upon Christmas. So um, we'll resume probably in February. We don't usually hold a January meeting. So um, this will be it until February. Thanks, Nikki. Yep, that's helpful. Okay, last call for questions. It'll be a little bit before we come together. So any out there? Okay, well, right. I'm gonna go yep. ahead and stop the recording. Thank you everybody for coming today. Thanks everyone. Great to be with you this morning. Appreciate it and hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Take care and be well.